so here we have a road network and we have some blue points which are some sort of generic facilities and some green points we'll call household. There's a couple different ways of measuring distances and the first one is just a straight line distance and it's the simplest to calculate. So I'm just going to search for the word distance and there's a tool called distance to nearest hub, line to hub. Um, so the hubs would be considered to be the, the facilities and we want to draw a line from each household point to the facility. So our source points will be the households, our destination hubs will be the facilities. Um, we can choose an attribute that's in the hub layer name. Uh, so for example I have a, a name, uh, so that would give us the name of the nearest hub uh, that may or may not be of interest to you. Um, the measurement unit um, you can specify, I'm going to do meters, and it's going to create a temporary layer uh, that will include that new distance. So let me run that. Um, as I said, this is the quickest way to do this, and it's usually quite fast um, because it doesn't need to consider any kind of distance along a network. Um, so if we look at these hub distances and open up the attribute table, what it has done is that for each um, household, um, I believe that's the ID here, um, it's found the name of the nearest hub. Uh, this might be an ID number, I just have some uh, Greek letter names here, and then it has the distance. I specified meters, so the distance from point number three to um, hub beta is uh, 51,000 meters. Um, so that's pretty quick. Um, however, in many parts of the world, uh, the road network can cause a considerable uh, difference in the distance that needs to be traveled. And so if I were to say look at um, OpenStreetMap overlaid here, I can see that there's a major river coming through here and there are not many bridges. Um, so for example, these, this household and this facility point are right across the river from each other, but um, to actually get there you're going to need to go a lot farther than whatever uh, this distance is. So you know, the straight line distance here is only um, 7,000 meters, um, however in reality You'll have to go a long way, cross a bridge, and come back over uh, to reach the facility. So how do we measure the distance along a network? Um, there's a couple different tools for that. Um, let me just turn off the hub distance for a moment. And uh, in the processing toolbox, uh, you can type the word network, and you'll find several tools under the network analysis uh, toolbox. Um, Maybe just to demonstrate, I'll use the shortest path point to point. Uh, this will allow you to manually pick points. So let's just use this as an example. Um, let's see, let's go. So our starting point will be the household. Um, I could turn on snapping if I really want to get exactly that point. Um, but basically, it's capturing the coordinates from uh, the map click. So let's plug those in here. Um, I want to calculate the shortest distance, uh, the vector layer representing the network. I want to make sure I pick my roads layer for that. And let's see what else. I'm going to leave all these advanced parameters um, as their default values, but there are um, capabilities in here for one-way roads and, and things like that. So I'm going to create a temporary output that will contain the shortest path for this particular pair of points. Um, no matter how many points you want to find distances between, it needs to build a graph of the road network, and that's often the, the longest part of the process. Uh, so that's what it's doing right now. I'm using a small subset of, of roads, uh, so this will run fairly quickly. But if you're running this across a whole country or a state, uh, it may take a bit longer. Um, that build time um, has to happen no matter how many points you have. So if I were then measuring distances of 100 uh, different pairs of points, um, it probably wouldn't take that much longer uh, because it's the mo most of the work is building that graph. So if I look at the results for this, um, the shortest path, uh, let's visualize that a bit better. So let's, um, here I can see that in fact to get from one place to another it had to go all the way down here. There's a bridge crossing the river and then coming back to the facility. Uh, so you can see that this line is 126,000 uh, meters. So that compared to what was it, 7,000, uh, can be a significant difference in the measurements. Now this is an extreme example, um, but generally a network distance is going to be more precise in most places. Okay, so what if we want to actually measure the distances from many points to many facilities? Um, in the built-in processing toolboxes, um, there is also a tool called point to layer, shortest path point to layer, um, and this will let us take a, 
a single point, maybe that's our facility. So if we only had one facility, we could use this to measure the distances to an entire layer of household points. So let's just try that as an example. Um, so our network, you make sure you pick the right one. If you've created other line outputs, such as shortest path or hub distance, you don't want to pick those as your, your network. So make sure you are picking your roads, um, doing the shortest path. My starting point, I'm going to pick the facility. Um, and then my vector layer with the endpoints, endpoint start points if the directions don't matter for you um, would be the same. Uh, so I'm going to pick my household. So I'm going to get from that one facility to all the households and figure out what those distances are. I'm going to leave the other settings as is and I'm going to run this. So again it has to build that graph. Um, in this case it's um, not, not too long. Okay, and I get a few errors that it could not find a route from a start point to an end point. Now this could be because I do not have a fully connected graph, and that is very likely. Um, but you can see the execution time is roughly what it was before. So again, most of the time is built bu building the graph, and then once it has that, I can pretty quickly measure distances. So if I want to look at these shortest paths, I can um, style those so we can see them a bit better. And here I can see all of these different um, green points. Here, maybe I'll make my lines green. Uh, yeah, something like this. Uh, so from each of these points uh, to this one facility that I picked. Um, and this works pretty well. Um, one thing you'll notice is that if the point itself was not actually on the network, it finds the nearest uh, point or vertex along that road network um, and starts from there. But there were a few cases where it did not find a match. So for example, this point here was not ever connected. Now it's not necessarily because it's too far from the road network, but if we look closely at this road network, um, it's disconnected and even over here where it gets pretty close, this network is actually not connected to the rest of the network, uh, which is probably why this point was not able to find a route to um, the facility. Um, there are some settings in the tool itself um, if you scroll down under the advanced features, there's a topology tolerance. So this is sort of the, the wiggle room that has to jump over those sorts of gaps in the road network itself. Um, I don't believe it has anything to do with the distance from the point to the road network, but with within the gaps um, of the road network. So if I were to boost this up to say 100 or 200 meters um, or whatever I would need to, to jump this gap here, um, then it would probably connect. Um, however, in our case, we have multiple facilities. I have four of these these blue points, and um, if we want to find the distance to the nearest one, that becomes a much trickier problem. There's no option in the network analysis tools uh, to find the shortest path from a layer to a layer. Um, at first, I thought I might be able to you know, run as a batch process and somehow do some configuration within here to, um, to do that calculation. Um, but then I found that there's this great plugin called the QNEAT3, which is the QJS Network Analysis Toolbox. Um, if you don't already have this on your computer, you want to go to the Plugins menu, Manage and Install Plugins, and just do a search for QNEAT. And here's the description. And um, I already have it installed, but if you need to install it for the first time, there would be a button down here that just says Install Plugin. You could click that, it'll um, download within a few seconds probably and then you'll have that tool in uh, your processing toolbox. So let's take a look inside QNEAT to see what is available. I'm going to clear my search and actually look at the full list. Um, there's three main categories. Uh, one is for routing, just finding a short path, uh, which is similar to the built-in tool. Um, there's also distance matrices. So if you want to find the distances from all of our households to all of the facilities, uh, we could do that. Um, it's a little bit different than our case where we just want to find the distance to the nearest facility. And the last category of tools in here is the ISO areas. So ISO areas are areas or polygons around um, a point um, that are shaped such that, say, everything um, within a 30 mile road network distance uh, would be inside that polygon. And there's various forms of the output for this, um, and you can create them from either a single point or a layer of, of uh, pointer or other features. Um, so there's contour lines, there's polygons. I'm, I'm not actually sure about point cloud, um, but we're going to use one that's called 
interpolation. So this is an interpolated raster. Um, so it creates a surface um, where each pixel represents the distance along a network to the nearest facility. Uh, and we're going to do this from a layer. So I'm going to open this up. So the network layer is going to be our roads our starting points. So in this case we are actually building out these ISO areas um, from our, our targets of interest. So this would actually be the facilities um, even though it's a start point. We were using start points um, households as our start points before. Uh, in this case the start points is the facilities. And the point IDs in this will be our name and then the size of the ISO area. This is the maximum size. I would suggest you make this much larger than you think it might need to be. So I'm entering 500,000 meters for the uh, size of the ISO area. Now the cell size is rather important. Um, obviously a more detailed, a smaller um, and more detailed cell size will give you more precision and um, but it'll also take longer to calculate. I'm going to go with um, for example purposes a, a cell size of one kilometer so a thousand meters. However you might want to do something a little more detailed than that uh, for your own purposes. You want to think about how large that um, overall raster will be. So thinking about your extent, how far, um, how many meters east-west that is, and north and south, um, divide that by the number of um, uh, meters in your cell size to get an, an estimated number of pixels. So you want that to be a reasonable number in the end. Under the advanced parameters here, um, I am doing a planar calculation method, which is appropriate for a projected coordinate system. And I'm not going to change any of the other settings here, and I'm going to go ahead and run this. And this will take a moment to build. Um, first of all, it is uh, tying analysis points to the graph and building it. So it's building that road graph uh, that we talked about before. And again, this is being done through the plugin. I don't know if it uses any of the built in graph tools or not. And now it's processing point zero. So that's point zero in our facilities list. Um, I don't fully understand what the mechanism of the algorithm is, uh, but I can see that now it's adding point 0.1. So if you were adding, say, 100 facilities, that would take significantly longer than the, the four example points that I have here. So we'll wait just a moment for this to run. I can hear the fan on my computer uh, cranking up a bit. All right, looks like it's finished that part, and now it's probably generating the raster. Okay, so it is finished, and let's take a look at the output. So the output is this raster, which generally covers the area of the roads themselves. Um, right now it's using a default color scheme uh, that is going from uh, just over 500 meters, so that's about half a pixel in my case, uh, all the way up to 211,000 meters. Um, this is going to be that river line, I believe. Um, let's actually move this below our other data so we can kind of see. I'm going to turn off some of these other layers here. And a better way to explore this would be to use the value tool, which is a uh, plugin uh, you can install from the, the plugin menu. Um, I have it here. It looks a lot like the identify tool. And when I open this up, what it gives me is over in this area down here, it gives me an instantaneous readout of any rasters that I have turned on. So I can see that near this facility, the, the values are quite low, only a, f a few thousand uh, meters, but as soon as I cross that river, it jumps up to over 100,000 in this case. Um, and so at any given point, so for example, this uh, household here, um, it's roughly 64 and a half uh, kilometers to uh, the nearest facility on the road network. And so what I can do at this point, now that I've generated this raster, that was the most expensive part of the computation, um, I can transfer those values to the point. So I'm going to search for sample raster values. And that is a really great tool for transferring uh, raster data to uh, points. So my input layer, these will be my points that I want the data to go to. This is my households. And the raster layer is going to be the output interpolation. Um, it'll copy a value from that uh, to a layer. And I don't know what comes after the prefix, but let's let's just put um, uh, you know, network dist underscore. And let's run this. 
it's pretty quick. Um, it's transferring the values to all of my household points, and let's let's take a look at these. So it's a new layer uh, called sampled, and if we open this up, I can see that for this given ID, it has a network distance. Um, it looks like it did an underscore one that may have been related to the fact that the data in the raster was in band one. Um, the idea behind that prefix is that you may be um, adding other rasters later on, and so you can control uh, how this house columns is named to a certain extent. Um, so there we have it. Um, maybe just to verify our results, if we do a graduated symbology on those points uh, using that network distance, and um, so what we should see is that the smaller values are white and the higher values are red. So the ones closest to the facilities. Um, and let's just turn off the uh, that raster for a moment, and actually maybe even turn off the roads. Um, the one generally the ones closest to the the points are um, are these low values with white, and as we get further away in, in the kind of the furthest point between the facilities, we have the dark red. With the exception, of course, being this one, which is um, sitting there on the um, across the river, so it's so far away that it does end up in this highest category. Um, in the dark red. So there we have it. There are uh, three different techniques for calculating distances between uh, a set of points and um, you may want to choose these based upon your own particular needs. Uh, straight line distances are quick and easy and very fast to compute. Um, however, they don't capture the nuances of the roads networks. Um, and so that's where you may want to actually calculate the path um, along the road network. And we've seen that the ISO area as interpolation will create a raster that has all of those values that we can then very quickly transfer on to our uh, set of points.